Section 4.6, Congruence of Right Triangles. In previous sections, we have proved triangles congruent in multiple ways. Theorem 4.6 gives us another way of proving triangles congruent. Here, it's going to be inside right triangles. And their theorem states, hypotenuse leg theorem, is if the hypotenuse and a leg of one right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and leg of another right triangle, then the triangles are congruent. A quick diagram is if I'm given two right triangles and I produce congruent corresponding legs in each right triangle and if I produce congruent hypotenuses, then I can state that these two triangles are congruent by the hypotenuse leg theorem. And this theorem only is justified when I'm given two right triangles. This slide wants us to determine whether the abbreviation identifies a congruent for triangles. If we go through, number one is SSS. This represents side, side, side. That is a valid way to prove triangles congruent. So side, side, side is a way that we would prove triangles congruent. Number two, SAS. That would be side, angle, side. That would be if I'm given two sides and an included angle of one triangle, congruent to two sides and an included angle of another triangle, the triangles are congruent. Another valid way to prove triangles are congruent. Number three, side, side, angle. Again, we could write that as angle, side, side. This is not a valid way of proving triangles congruent. Number four, if two angles and an included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and an included side of another triangle, the angles are congruent. That is a valid way to prove triangles congruent. Number five, if two angles and a non-included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and a non-included side of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. This is another way to prove triangles congruent. The last one, angle, angle, angle. If three angles of one triangle are congruent to three angles of another triangle, the triangles are not congruent. This is not a valid to prove triangles congruent. On our first proof, I want to prove that triangle ILH is congruent to triangle KLJ. In the given information, I know that HJ is a perpendicular bisector of segment KI. That tells me that HJ intersects at the midpoint of KI. Therefore, in step two, I can write that segment KL is congruent to segment LI by the reason of definition of segment bisector. I can also state by the definition of perpendicular bisector or definition of midpoint. Also in the given, I know that segment HJ is perpendicular to KI. Therefore, I know that angle KLJ and angle ILH are right angles by the reason definition of perpendicular lines. And since these two angles are right angles, that makes these two triangles right triangles. Also, on step four, I'm given that segment KJ is congruent to segment HI. And since these segments are opposite the right angle in each triangle, those would be congruent hypotenuse for each triangle. They are congruent. Therefore, I can state the triangle ILH is congruent to triangle KLJ by the reason of theorem 4.6, the hypotenuse leg theorem. Here we have another proof. I know that I have to prove triangle ABE congruent to triangle CDE. Our given is AB perpendicular to BD. When I know that, I know that angle ABE is a right angle. I'm also given CD is perpendicular to BD. Therefore, I know that angle CDE 
is a right angle. And that is because of the definition of perpendicular lines. Number three, E is the midpoint of DB. Therefore, that point divides the segment into two congruent segments. And I know segment BE is congruent to segment ED. Definition of midpoint. Step four, I'm given the triangle AEC is an isosceles triangle with a vertex at angle AEC. Therefore, I know that an isosceles triangle has two congruent sides, and the two congruent sides form the vertex angle. So I can state that segment EA is congruent to segment EC by the definition of an isosceles triangle. When I take a look at the diagram, I can realize I'm given two right triangles. These are the triangles I need to prove congruent. To each triangle, I have corresponding legs, and the hypotenuse is congruent. Therefore, I can state triangle ABE is congruent to triangle CDE by theorem 4-6, the hypotenuse leg theorem. The next examples want us to identify which two triangles are congruent by the HL theorem, then state the congruent statements. Here, I have a leg that is 3 and a hypotenuse that is 5. Here, I have a leg that is 3 and a hypotenuse that is 5. On the last right triangle, I'm given a leg that is 3, but the other leg is 5. Therefore, this triangle is not part of the congruence. These two are my two congruent triangles by the H-L theorem. My two hypotenuses are 5, my legs are 3, and I have a right angle. Now, I just need to state the congruent statement triangle, and I'll start with this one, I will start with the right angle, go to the single tick, then to the hypotenuse double tick, M, L, N, is congruent to, starting with the right angle, Q, to single tick leg, to double tick hypotenuse, Q, O, P. And these two triangles are congruent by the HL theorem. Here, they want me to determine the value of x in each triangle. The first one, I have a triangle. I'm going to use the triangle sum theorem. The interior angles of a triangle must add up to 180 degrees. So I have 120 and 35. That's 155. Therefore, when I deduct from 180, that leaves me x equal to 25 degrees. In this triangle, I'm given two isosceles triangles, and if we recall the isosceles triangle theorem, if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite are congruent. So I can draw in my arcs for this triangle, and since these two angles are vertical, they are congruent, I can put a single arc here, and this is inside of another isosceles triangle, so I can make this one another single arc. Now I can go back to my first triangle, realize the vertex angle is 70. If I deduct that from 180, that leaves me 110 for the value of these two angles combined. Divide that by 2, I get 55 degrees for each angle. But since these two angles are vertical, that makes them congruent. That makes this angle also 55. That makes this angle 55 degrees. Adding these two angles together gives me 110. And using the triangle sum theorem, I deduct that from 180, that gives me this angle equal to 70 degrees. Here I'm given another isosceles triangle, and I know by the isosceles triangle theorem, 
if two sides of a triangle are congruent, the angles opposite are congruent. I use the triangle sum theorem to determine the sum of these two angles. So 50 from 180 leaves me these two angles sum to be 130 degrees. If I divide by 2, I can get the measure of each angle. And 130 divided by 2 is going to give me 65 for each angle. Now I can compare it to this exterior angle of the triangle. These two angles are a linear pair. That makes them supplementary, which means the sum of them is 180 degrees. Deducting 65 from 180 leaves me the value of x to be 115 degrees. Continuing, I know that this is an exterior angle. From a previous theorem, we know the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. In other words, if I add up the angles that are not adjacent to this angle, it equals that angle. Therefore, I can create an equation. 2x minus 3 is equal to 27 plus x. That is, the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. Solving for x will give me x equal to 30. Here, I know that these two angles are a linear pair. A linear pair is supplemental angles. Therefore, if I deduct 100 from 180, that leaves me this angle equal to 80. Since they are congruent, that angle is equal to 80. Using the triangle sum theorem, that gives me 80 plus 80 is 160. Dividing from 180 leaves me the value of x to equal 20 degrees.